Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about some of the pain points that you will experience as a developer, in particular uh, building front ends. So for example, if you're building a front end UI and you need data, you're going to make an API call to an API endpoint, but the endpoint may not exist yet. Maybe your back end developers haven't gotten around to it yet, or maybe it's just not behaving as it should. Maybe you have some bugs or broken assets on your website or app. Maybe you're running into these course issues or authentication issues or headers. And another thing is sometimes you have a, a hard to reach state on your app, a particular uh, error state, perhaps maybe uh, a more rare status code, or maybe maybe sim maybe a simple error status code like 500. Maybe you want to show a different UI based on that, right? Or maybe you just quickly want to try something and there is no API for that yet on the back end, right? So I run a website, bytesgrant.com. And of course, there are things that I want to try on my website. So for example, I would perhaps want to try out this promo here in the corner of the page. Maybe the data for this should come from a backend API, but it doesn't exist yet. Maybe I have other backend developers and I don't want to bother them. I just quickly want to experiment a bit. So I was able to make this work thanks to a tool called Requestly. They are also today's sponsor. And in this video, I actually want to show you why we want to use a tool like this. Maybe you've seen these API clients before and it's not only an API client, you were wondering if they can help you out uh, in your workflows. And I actually think, yes, it can help you in many ways. Requestly allows us to basically mock and intercept these requests that your app is going to make. So if your app is going to make a request to your backend API, but the API doesn't exist yet, you can sort of intercept it and just return some JSON, for example, so that you can just quickly start iterating on your front end. So you can use it as a chrome extension or as an actual desktop application the desktop application is a little bit more powerful but if you just need a quick and lightweight solution you may want to prefer the extension however in this video i will use the desktop application so let me actually show you why we want to use it and how to set it up and some of the things that we can do with this all right so here i'm in the requestly desktop application and here we can help with some of those issues that I just mentioned. So when there is a request, maybe for an API endpoint, we can use Requestly here to intercept that and make it return something. Now to do that, Requestly needs to know uh, where the requests are gonna come from. We may wanna enable Requestly on our entire computer. So if the request is coming from uh, the Chrome browser, it may be able to, it, it will be able to intercept it. Or if you are building a mobile app, it may intercept it from there. If you are building a desktop application yourself or any other place where there's a request, you may want to try this. Now, in this case, I can just connect a particular app. So it could be, for example, Google Chrome, right? So if I click on that, it will actually open up Google Chrome in a new profile, as they call it. Maybe you've seen it around, but it has like a different color. But if I open up a new app like this, it actually seems to work for me as well. So if I go to bytegrant.com right now, I'm on the website. And now if I go back, uh, you can see that there are a bunch of logs here, essentially, basically showing now all the requests that it's able to pick up from that Chrome browser, right? So um, I went to bytecrypt.com, but actually also it went to this requestly.io page automatically. So here on the left side, I can now see all the domains of the requests that it was able to pick up so far, right? So it's not only bytecrypt.com. When you go to my website, I'm also loading an image, this one, and this is coming from Cloudinary. I ho I'm hosting that on cloudinary.com. So when this page is being loaded, another request is going out to Cloudinary, right? So that is also something we see here, right? So Cloudinary is included here as well. All right, now if I just click on ByteGrad, it's only going to show me the requests for ByteGrad.com itself. And actually, it, and actually there was only one request just for the homepage here. I'm not, I don't have any API requests. There are no other requests going to ByteGrad right now, right? So if I refresh here and now go back, you can see there's another request here. I right, know, let's say I wanna experiment on my page. Maybe I wanna add like a promotional banner here in a corner of the page on every page on my website, on the homepage, for example, and I wanna display some promo. Now I may have different promos in the UI, for this element to get the right promo, it needs to make an API call to the API endpoint to get the current uh, promo available. So it could be one course free if you buy three, or maybe there's 20% discount, but it needs to make an API call. So I just added this here to the page. And now here in Requestly, I cleared the log, so I removed everything. And now if I refresh, you can see that there is still, it picked up on a request to ByteGrad the homepage, but I added something, I added a script to the page now as well. And that script is making a fetch call. Well, this API endpoint, 
to get the uh, promo information, right? And that API endpoint does not exist yet. Maybe I don't have a backend application ready to go yet. Maybe I have backend developers that are working on something else, right? So right now, if I refresh here, you can see fetch, there is an API call to that uh, URL, but there is no API endpoint there. So I cannot try anything here. So I don't see anything here yet. Now with Requestly, we can mock, we can intercept uh, this type of API traffic and we can return something to actually make it work despite not having our API endpoints ready to go. So we can go to rules here and here we have certain rules. Here we can do some things with those uh, requests that we intercept. So we can redirect the request or we can replace something in the string. If you're making post requests, like you're submitting something, sometimes you also want to try changing some, changing what's being submitted. So we can modify the request body. If you're getting a response back, and there's actually many things that we would want to check for, maybe even headers and maybe, and perhaps change. So we can do that as well. We can even modify headers or even emulate different user agent. And we can do some other things as well. But let's say I just wanna uh, return some JSON info, some JSON data so we can actually, so my script can actually display something on the page. So what I could do is I can simply click on modify response and I can say the resource type is gonna be just API. So for which request do we wanna modify the response? Well, it's when the request is for that promo, right? So the API call that I'm making here is to uh, this one. So I will just copy this. So if Requestly is able to intercept a request with this URL, then we can return some, for example, we could simply say free course if you buy three. I can also pick a status code here. So let's make it 200, okay. But if you're checking for error states, for example, you could make it, let's say 500. Now, if I save this, I have saved the rule. Now, if I go back to my page and I refresh now, you can see I have uh, updated this widget here. I get a 200 status code here with the response that I have hard coded here in Requestly. So now I can see what this looks like, even though there is no API endpoint available yet, right? So I think that's pretty cool. Now this is one way of doing it. So I'm just returning some simple static data here. You can get a little bit more sophisticated here as well. So here I have all my rules and here I created that response rule. Right, so I'm basically uh, mocking some response here. I can delete it. I can actually also just upload some file. So if you already have some data like a JSON file, you can already use that as basically your API uh, data, even though you don't have a complete backend application yet, by just uploading that as a file here. So here I have a JSON file for promo. And notice it's version one, maybe this is one version. And the data here is going to be uh, similar to what we just saw, right? So just JSON data. That's one file I have. The second file I have is for version two, right? So an alternative. So here, uh, this file is going to, is also JSON data, but now just with some different text here for the promo. Okay. Right. So if you already have a JSON file ready to go, you can very easily upload that. So now when there is a request for let's say uh, slash API uh, promo, I want to serve the data from those files, right? So in this case, I can use a redirect request. I'm basically going to, I'm basically going to redirect it to those files. So I can do redirect and I can say, if you see a request for that API endpoints, API requ requestly demo promo, then we're going to redirect. Well, we could do a different URL, right? So in fact, I can just do bytecrats.com. I can even make it, let's say requestly.com. Right. If I do this, now if I go to bytecrack.com, you can see I'm being redirected, right? So of course that's not what we want. We just want to redirect when it's that API call, right? The fetch request for the API call. In that case, we want to redirect to, well, we can pick a file, the file server. So basically what we just uploaded as JSON data, we can pick one of those files, right? So here you can see, uh, maybe I just want to try uh, version one. So I can select that file. I can so save the rule. If I go to bytecrack.com again, you can see that data from that JSON file is being displayed here. And we can also see that in a network tab here. So you can see that uh, there is a request for that API endpoint, but it's being redirected here. And we can see the redirect URL here, right? So this is actually that file, that JSON file that we uploaded. Cool. Now I have another version of this. So this is just one option, but we also have version two. So here we have one rule, that redirect rule for version one. I can actually just duplicate it. Um, so I can just duplicate this. And then this one should serve the file, the other file, right? So with version two, so I can just select that one here. I can save that. So now for that one API call, I have two rules. The original one with version one, that one is active right now. And the other one, the new one here is actually not active uh, for version two. 
So if we go right now, we're still gonna see version one, right? But now if I quickly wanna check the other version, I can just toggle this and disable the first one. Now, if I refresh here, you will see that now we have version two here, right? So I can very easily toggle between different versions, see which one I prefer. Right, very quick way to experiment here. Right, but maybe you're using some kind of library or third-party asset that also has different versions. Uh, Requestly makes it really easy to toggle between those. Not, and that's not just with redirecting here, how I did it here, it's just an easy way in my view. What we could also do is in a rule, you can also change query parameter. Um, I could also go here and I could say, well, if we take a look at that API call, you can see it has a query parameter here of variant is version one, right? Now what I could do in uh, Requestly is I can also set up those query params here. So I can also add and replace them. I can remove them. They have a basically native option you could say for manipulating query params as well in case you want to do it that way. Okay, so here are my rules. And if you don't like them anymore, you can also just delete them. And let's delete this one as well. Let's see what else we can do here. And let's actually say we do prefer the initial option, modify the response. This is a bit easier than uploading a JSON file. Here you can just sort of hard code uh, you know, quick message. When there is an incoming request for that, we're just gonna return 200 okay with this message. So I will uh, save here. And now, if I, and now if I go back and refresh, you can see we still have our message. This is a bit easier, it's just directly manipulating the uh, response data here. Now we can do other things as well by with the response, by the way. So if I go here, we can actually also modify headers, for example, not just on the response, also request. So if we go to this one, so on that API call, we may also just wanna add a response header, right? So there are some default ones out of the box here, but maybe we do wanna mark that request with some header like promo, maybe the user should be eligible or not. Uh, something like that. If I now save this, I refresh here, we can see if I go to that request and I scroll down a little bit, there is now an, a header here inserted by Requestly, right? So here, response headers now include that custom response header that we set up here. So you can get pretty sophisticated with this. Maybe you have some authentication issue or course issue and you need to change headers, you can do all of that here as well. Okay, so sometimes you just wanna check some loading state or error state. So in this case for loading state, if I refresh, you can see it's pretty fast, right? So if I wanna delay it a little bit, I can go here as well, I can delay a network request. So if there's an API call for that data, we can just say, you know what, just wait 200 milliseconds, two seconds before returning a response. I can save the rule here. I can go here, refresh. You can see there is now a pretty, you know, much longer loading state. So I can properly inspect that as well. Let's actually exaggerate it a little bit, five seconds. If I refresh now, you can see I have plenty of time here to iterate over the loading state. And it's not just loading state, right? If you want to check the error state, you may, for example, return a 500 uh, status code right, or something else, right? Or maybe you have a more rare status code that you actually wanna check, which would be really hard to replicate yourself in the app. It's much easier to do it from here. So basically what we've done here is intercepting a request and changing, manipulating it. Now, one other thing we can do here as well is we can also inject scripts or CSS. And that is actually how I got that uh, script here on the page in the first place. So I'm injecting a script here and that script is making the API call. So I actually did that here. So I injected the script uh, with Requestly as well. So you don't have to go into the code of your website and inject something. Maybe you just quickly wanna try something. Well, you can even insert it from Requestly here as well, right? So I used the insert script rule for that. So what we've done now basically is we've mostly intercepted some requests here and we are manipulating that. That's basically what we're doing here with rules. Now there's also an APIs tab here and this is more uh, traditional API client perhaps that you're used to. So right now, whenever I wanted to make a request, I went here and I had to refresh here, right? And I had to inspect the network tab here. But I can also uh, make those requests right here in the Requestly dashboard. So we can create a new request and I can say, well, make a get request to, to get the promotional data. Okay, so I can just do it right here. I can send and I will get a response in a few seconds because we still have that uh, delay. But you can see now I have a response here uh, like this. Let me actually change the layout here so it's sitting next to each other. So you can see there was a request and here we get the response, the actual JSON data, okay? So you can also make requests from here Maybe just quickly want to test some API endpoints. And here I'm making a very simple get request, but you can see there is a query parameter in here as well. It automatically picks up on that. So here it's making a request here with query params. It can see that there is a variant param in there with a value of V2. If I quickly want to try something else, I can just 
change the v2 in here and send another request these are some basic uh, get requests so there's no body for these but we can still change the headers and authorization right so if you're doing it with authentication for example or, or uh, cookies and tokens we can do a lot of that here as well now we may want to send a post request so with post you're actually submitting data we can specify that here as well right so there are different types for that and we can do all of that here as well including these other request types now you may have requests for let's say staging and production so there is an option here for environment so then you can pick your environment to see the requests available for that. Requestly also allows working with GraphQL. So one of the things we can do is make a GraphQL request. We can also create a new collection. So if you have a bunch of them, you can actually also drag and drop them here to combine them. So in this case, um, I'm testing the ByteGrad uh, promo API endpoints or maybe a bit broader ByteGrad API endpoints. They actually also have a default set of examples here. So you can see they have uh, hello world, some folders here and the actual request. Uh, so if you just quickly want to try it out, you can see that uh, Requestly here sends you a big response here with all sorts of options, with all sorts of data. We can also use variables and they have an explanation here of how they work. So you don't have to repeat, let's say the base URL if you have a set of requests to API endpoints on that particular base URL. Here they have something with environment variables like an auth token. So you can get much more sophisticated here and I would recommend that you check out these examples, including this API here. And so that was the Requestly desktop app. But as I mentioned, they also have a Chrome extension. And so you can get way more advanced than what I just showed you in this video. It's not just an API client. They mentioned it's an all-in-one API development platform. And so intercepting those HTTP requests, creating a mock API and file server, as we saw to serve, for example, JSON data that you may already have in, in some JSON file. We can actually also do session recording. So there is an option here for recording your session as well. I like it a lot for front-end engineers. So if you want to redirect production JavaScript, this comes up sometimes. You want to test an API endpoint or create some mock APIs, modify the API endpoints or headers or quick debug with the session replay. You can do that with Requestly. If you are full stack or backend, you can of course test your API endpoints or mock third-party APIs, right? That's also something right? that's also something that may be necessary sometimes. Or maybe you have QA engineers on your team. You can help them or work together on some of the issues that you run into, you can report bugs, right? of course, test API endpoints. Or for support engineers, um, maybe you're getting some incoming requests from people that something isn't working. Maybe you need to manipulate the requests, for example, to quickly try out some things and see where the issue is. Well, that could be an option here as well. So actually, I had a great time using Requestly. I think it's a very powerful tool. I would say check them out. You can find a link in the description. In any case, thanks for watching. Hopefully, it's helpful for your particular use case. And I hope you have a nice day. Bye.